All right, y'all. So, what's going on, y'all? That boy Gam back in the building, tapping in with y'all one more time. Um, today I wanted to review this Andre three thousand interview where he was explaining about how he feel about the music industry and all of that, and how he doesn't feel like he can have anything to say as far as a rapper and things like that. But the thing is, Andre 3000 was one of my all-time favorite rappers. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I respect whatever he choose to do, just like I respect. Like, Lauren Hill was also one of my favorite artists. And, you know, she kind of stopped making music, whatever. You can be upset because you don't get the music from them anymore. But at the same time, they are a human being. They have control of their own life ultimately it's their decision what they want to do and the thing is as far as an artist you are not always a hundred percent in control of how you feel as far as what you want to create people might want you to create rap albums but you just might not feel it and that's something that's hard to explain to some people but if you know how it goes creatively you just might not be into that you might not want to do that now me personally my thoughts about his album is the album is good because it's just music you can play it in the elevator art galleries high-end boutique stores and it's any kind of person can play it. it's the type of music you listen to in the massage parlor like you getting a massage just the type of music you might want to be playing in the background or if you like me sometimes i get tired of rap music i get tired of what anybody got to say i don't want to hear no words sometimes i just want to hear just straight music you know and it is very soothing music very soothing relaxing to the brain where you can just play it in the background you don't really have to pay attention to it so much it's just there you know what i'm saying which is great, and it is kind of like a healing. It's very peaceful music, you know? But I'm going to just play this because what I don't agree about is what he, how he explains his perspective on rapping and at his age and everything. So I'm going to just play it, and we, we can see what he got to say. Are you apprehensive? Very. Very, very apprehensive. <laughs> Do you feel like that played into decisions you made about Outcast too? I think uh, just in general, when it came to figuring out what we would do creatively and where where my creative juice is coming from within Outcast, like there there was a certain point where I just didn't know where else to go. You know, I didn't like even that. And like you said, it came to a point where he didn't know where else to go. Everybody kind of gets that as an artist. You might have writer's block. You might have a whole season where you don't feel like doing nothing, but then, you know, all of a sudden, one day you get inspired. That's why all these rappers that say they retired, and then they always come back with a new album. Because why would you tell yourself you can't do something that you love that was your outlet release? Nobody would tell somebody, oh, you can't do yoga anymore because you are 50 years old or something like that or you can't do a painting, if that's how you release, then you should be able to do it. It's really nobody's business, for real, but. Like, people think, oh man, he's just sitting sitting on raps, or like, he's just holding, or holding these raps hostage. Like, I ain't got no raps like that. Like, it's, it's it actually feels, sometimes it feels inauthentic for me to rap, because I, I don't have anything to talk about in that way. Like, I'm 48 years old, and not, not to say that age is a thing that dictates what you rap about but in a in a way it does and like things that happen in my life like what do you talk like i gotta go get a, a colonoscopy like what do you, <laughs> you like what do you rap about you know what i mean like my rap. eyesight my eyesight is going bad like but you're not you're not just any okay see now this is the part that i really wanted to touch on right because first of all andre 3000 was just on a feature with Kanye on Kanye's last album. The song uh where they were talking about their mothers, man, this was this was beautiful 
music, beautiful music, Andre 3000 delivered, perfect. You know, when you think about, uh, uh, what is that, the International Players Anthem with UGK, Pimp C, and Bum B, and that, uh, I Choose You, uh, you know, you know you ain't a pimp, but pimp, remember what I taught you, keep your heart straight. Everybody know that one, right? What you want to hear from Andre 3000 is just his pure honesty and the way that he is able to talk about the life that he is currently living. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is talk about the life you're currently living and just do it the way you do it. You, the way you do it, you got to have some, you, you should be confident in your ability. So don't think about that anymore, but just think about you talking about your current life experiences. It doesn't have to be, you don't really have to look for subjects to talk about, talk about yourself. This is why, this is why we see the older artists having some success. Now, first of all, I got to say, Jay-Z was one of the people who set the, the blueprint, no pun intended, but he set the blueprint as far as with the 444 album. I felt like when he did that, he kind of showed the older artists how to do it because he talked about his family. He talked about his relationship with his wife. He talked about his kids being a father. He talked about real estate. He talked about, you know, showing, kind of teaching people things and showing people a perspective from that point in his life, where his life is at the current moment. They were all grown man topics. You know what I'm saying? Honesty, grown man topics. And Nas also was able to come out and have his run recently. Because when you listen to his albums and listen to his subject matter, they are all grown man topics. Him being honest, open about the life that's right in front of him. Fine. And Andre 3000, I don't have to tell you how to put it in an artistic way because you are the artist. You are an artist. That's why we all support and love Andre 3000. But you don't got to think about what to talk about. Talk about your life, your current situations in life. And every time we hear you on a feature, you deliver. So... Just do that. Do what you do when somebody got you on a feature. You do fine. For like you're a, a top five, top, you know, to many people. To me, it's like you're basically being like, I have a very beautiful sports car in the garage, but I choose never to, to drive it, you know, which is which is your talent. Talent is one thing, but honestly, it's I think timing and momentum is more important than talent. And the energy of it like talent it's a lot of people with talent and we're seeing that now like there's so many dope people on the internet like that are just raw but it's your timing is what you're talking about is if you're catching the zeitgeist of what's happening in the, in the world see the timing and what you're talking about that's true that the timing and stuff matters but not as far as you just doing whatever you want to do as far as expressing yourself and showing your art like that's commercial success is kind of what you're talking about like with the timing and all of that that's for the mass the commercial success and uh you know who cares about that for real when you talking about somebody like Andre 2000 really when you're talking about any artist for real because it's like the people who love you are going to love it people who love what you do are going to love it that timing and all of that that's just, that's for the major label artists people who are trying to be you know uh, commercial success and all of that. It's like, that don't matter as far as you putting out what you want to put out. And now your fans that love you going to be like, man, we're satisfied. We just want to be updated with what's going on with Andre 3000 right now in 2023. What's his perspective? We just, we want to hear your perspective on life right now, you know, cause it's valuable valuable it can help people just listening to you as long as it's honest it's valuable to other people you know but it just kind of sound like he is doubting himself he don't want to be let he don't want to be uh 
have a failure as far as musically for somebody to be like, I don't like this. But there's plenty of people saying they don't like the flute album idea anyway. So, you know, you you got it anyway. But it just sounds like he's self-conscious a little bit about it all. And like, my goal is I want to connect. I'm not talking about nothing that I can't connect with. And it, Have you it's, tried? It's no, it's no use. Yeah, I try all the time. Like, I'm open to producers now, like the young producers, and I get beats all the time. Like, and people send me songs, like, to get on remixes and stuff like that, but I don't be knowing what to talk about most of the time, you know? Do you think that's about expectations or, it's, or, or lack of self-belief? Like, where do you think that comes from? See, but before he answered that, that's what he's saying. He don't be knowing what to talk about, but just talk, take from your own life. Don't try to, you know, appease any type of crowd or anything. Just express, express yourself however you see fit. Like, I think you're your best and worst critic, and I only work on feeling. Feeling is my own only barometer of what I'm doing. Like, I don't feel like I'm the best rapper. I don't feel like I'm the best producer. I don't feel like I'm the best singer, actor, none of that. It's just, for me, my gauge is feeling. And that's always been that way, even with an outcast. Like, if it felt right, I ain't care what other people thought. If it felt right, it was like, I ain't gonna argue with what it feel like. And if it don't feel right to me, which it hasn't in a while, like when it comes to rapping or vocal, you know, type of music. I don't do it. The song is... And see, that's my point from the beginning, though, is that if he doesn't want to rap and he doesn't like it, like if he's not enjoying it and that's not what he really wants to do, then he doesn't have to. It's still his choice. I just don't want it to be like, oh, he can't because of this and I can't because of that. But if you just don't want to... That's your personal choice. Like, if you feel like making the flute albums is more fulfilling to you right now, then that's what you should do. Because it's your life. Whatever makes you happy at the end of the day, that's what matters. You know? But I ain't going to hold y'all too long. I don't want to go through the whole video. But y'all check this out. This is the Andre 3000, the GQ interview. And it's... It's pretty interesting, man. You kind of, you kind of get a um, perspective of what is his mind frame, and uh, you know. But I will say that that flute album is pretty good because it might just do better than people think because it's gonna be all kind of demographics of people who can just play that music in the background. A lot of businesses, a lot of places. Like I say, art galleries, massage parlors, all kind of places like that. They can just have that music playing and nobody even going to really know what it is probably. But but it's working, you know? So I ain't going to hold y'all too long. Gam, tapping out. Y'all check my links out. Till next time, y'all.